Ladies and gentlemen, it finally happened. Super Mario Maker 2 has finally been announced. Hooray! But not only has the game finally been announced, but the short trailer we've seen so far looks fantastic and incredibly interesting. So what I want to do today is to take a look at the trailer, share some thoughts, discuss a lot of the new stuff shown so far, speculate a bit about what could be in the game that hasn't been announced yet and point out some things that are easy to miss in the trailer. So you ready? Let's do this! So here's the very first frame of the trailer and there is already a very small quality of life change in place that makes me incredibly happy. They finally got rid of the ground break that happened between ground blocks placed in the level and the ground blocks that belong to the starting area in the original Mario Maker. That's a super small thing but it's something that always annoyed me to no end and I'm glad they finally fixed it. But there's also another small interesting new thing shown in this frame. So a bit later during the trailer we get a shot of this area in the creation mode which makes it possible to build a one-to-one one recreation of the scene in the Wii U version of the game. Something I immediately did and something that shows that they've been tinkering with how the camera works when Mario is high up. In the new version the camera is one block higher which gives a better overview and is a good change in my opinion since the camera always felt a bit off when platforming high up in a stage. That those two changes happened make me really look forward to the full game because this shows that they took the time and re-evaluated all systems and mechanics that were in place in the first game. You know no one would have complained if they didn't tinker with the camera while high in the air, yet they still took the time to look into this and to find out if there is some way to improve the system in place so far. This shows that they weren't under huge time constraints while developing the sequel and it shows that they really cared. There are a couple of other small improvements shown too. Later in the trailer we see a huge platform for example, which probably means that platforms finally learned how to eat yum yum mushrooms, which you know kind of makes sense. And at an even later point we see this red pipe. The pipe seems to spawn enemies constantly without the small random delay that is present in the original version of the game, which is great. Also the pipe spawns enemies faster and further than the original pipes do, which makes me actually believe that the different colored pipes not only serve a decorative purpose, but actually change how pipes spawn enemies. Such small things tend to really improve a game overall and it looks as if there are tons of small improvements. So our trailer plumber proceeds and happens to jump onto an ouching shell. How unfortunate for him. But fortunate for us because this gives us the first shot of the new creation menu. There are a couple of old and a couple of new things here, so the new stuff. First this symbol here. This appears to be the sub area manager since we later in the trailer see it again showing it too, which probably indicates the sub areas. This new search button opens up the item wheel. The sound effect frog got a walking brick block partner, which probably means that there are some additional effects, maybe even stickers, which could be awesome. There are these three symbols. One is a camera and two are currently grayed out. The one symbol is a feather and we're going to see more about it a bit later in the trailer. The other one looks like maybe a ship thingy? No idea what this one does. Maybe the water levels are controlled here. This symbol down there is another mystery to me. It looks a bit like two overly excited balloons or something. No idea what this one does either. Finally there is this symbol. We can learn more about that later in the trailer. Next we get a good look onto the new item wheel thing. One thing I'm wondering is how the creation is going to work while the switch is in docked mode. I'm guessing here but the fact that they decided to go with a wheel menu makes me believe that motion control creating using the joy cons as pointers is maybe going to be a thing. Such menus just work pretty good when using a pointer. It's for example how they designed the item wheel in Skyward Sword. I'm just guessing here but when I saw this menu wheel I immediately thought this looks as if it was designed with motion controls in mind. Another question is how they are going to handle the less precise touch screen inputs since the switch doesn't have a pen. Later in the trailer we see that it is possible to zoom in and to zoom out. Zooming in definitely makes it easier to create on the touch screen. My best guess is that zooming is just done like on a smartphone browser using two fingers to zoom in and out, which could work really well. The Switch touchpad has a multi-touch feature, which means it is able to recognize more than a single touch at a time. This makes it possible to create touch gestures that weren't possible on the Wii U gamepad. No idea if Nintendo plans to actually implement shortcut gestures to the game like, I don't know, swiping with three fingers down to undo or something, but if they decide to do something like that, that could be really interesting. So let's talk about what we see in the wheels. There are two green enemy wheels, only containing enemies present in the original version of the game. There is definitely at least one more enemy wheel which is never shown in the trailer since we don't see Kamek in here even though he appears a bit later. There is only one item wheel however and this one is a bit disappointing. The only new thing here is a 10 coin coin which is cool and all but it appears as if there are no new power-ups added to the existing themes which would be a bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion. 
and then we see slopes. So let's talk about slopes. I honestly never expected them to add slopes to the game, because slopes make tons of things really, really complicated. And I'm really looking forward to find out how they tackle those problems. So let's do a quick slope thought experiment. So we have a slope and we have a bullet blaster that drops onto the slope from above. What happens? The blaster can't just stay upright when landing on the slope, that would look really really silly. So it has to land on the slope in such a way that it turns 45 degrees. So does this blaster now stand like this? I think that would be a bit counterintuitive as well. Does it slide down? What when the space is occupied by a block, does the blaster then rotate only 20 degrees and get stuck? Does this allow us to fire bullet bills at each angle? What happens when a form ground pounds onto the blaster? Does the form stop or does it turn and slide down? What happens if we drop another blaster onto the blaster? How does this one behave? Does it turn as well? Are enemies able to walk over the steep plaster? The whole Mario Maker physics aren't designed to handle such problems, which is why I never thought that we were going to see slopes in the game. I believe the solution Nintendo found to solve this problem is just to cheat a bit of it. I think if a blaster drops onto a slope, it will just stop straight where it landed and will be rendered a bit over the slope. The reason why I believe this is how they are going to handle this is because this is what they do with the shell mats shown in the trailer. That's probably the best solution to get slopes into the game without completely new physics. We're almost done discussing the first trailer bit, just one more thing. There are a lot of ground blocks in this first trailer level, so many that it made me wonder if we can conclude out of how much ground there is that the maximum block limit got raised. So I rebuilt this area on the Wii U version. And nope we can't. It's possible to put down the same amount of blocks in the old version without running into any problems. The limit could still be much higher, but we can't deduce it from the trailer. There's also a new view mode, which seems to be activated by pushing the joystick, at least that's how I would understand the symbol. Judging from this picture, the level height is the same as before. I quickly counted how many vertical blocks there are, and it's 27, the same amount as in the original game. Which leads me to believe that the vertical limit isn't changed in the new version. Which would be a huge pity, because the vertical space in the original was way too limited in my opinion. But maybe there are vertical levels and they just want to reveal them at a later point. Okay, so that was the boring part of the trailer. Now let's take a look at all the new stuff they teased, because Holy fuzzy, did they tease a lot of new stuff. So first the air blowing cloud things. Oh my god, I have so many questions. Can we rotate those so that they push Mario away in other directions? Do they only interact with Mario or do they work with enemies too? Are they able to blow power blocks upwards? Is the wind effect stopped by solid tiles or does it extend over it? Because if the effect is actually stopped by solid blocks, those guys in combination with the new on off switches could be an incredibly powerful tool for all sorts of nasty contraptions. Also do they stack? I'm able to build an elevator just by putting several wind clouds above each other and what happens if I feed one of those guys a mushroom. Anyway, next we see the first shot of the desert theme in the new Super Mario Bros. Freestyle. There are a lot of new themes shown in the trailer. I'm pretty sure we get at least four new themes for each style. We see the desert theme twice, once here and once in the 3D world style. We see a jungle theme twice, once here and once for the Mario world style. There is a snow theme shown, once here and finally there is a spacey night theme. I love this night theme, especially how it looks in new Super Mario Bros. U style. I'm really really glad that Nintendo decided not only to add one or two new themes and to call the day, because the original was really lacking regarding visual diversity after a while, and the new styles should really help to make the game feel fresh again. Okay, so back to the screenshot. The Angry Sun is shown here as a new enemy for the first time, and yet it's cool. I wonder if we get the Angry Sun in each and every style, or if this is New Super Mario Bros. 3 exclusive. Also, why is the sun so angry again? Anyway, the next thing we get to see are snake blocks, which are an addition I honestly never thought about, but depending on how they work could be incredibly powerful for creating advanced Mario Maker machinery. So I wonder about two things. First, do the snake blocks only start to move if Mario touches them or is there a snake block version that starts to travel as soon as it is loaded? And second, is it possible to create a loop where the stone snake just travels the same path for eternity? If it is possible to set up looping stone snakes that don't need Mario to activate, well, that would be incredibly cool. It would allow for simple setups for clocks and timers to easily transport stuff from A to B in a complicated contraption, to build interesting minigames and for a lot more. I really hope that's how they work, because if it is, then the snake blocks are probably the second best new addition shown so far. Wow, there's so much stuff in this little trailer. Next we see the new option to have water in levels. We only see water ground hybrid levels twice. 
once here and once later in the jungle 3D world theme. I'm hoping that having water isn't exclusive to the jungle theme, but I don't think it is. I'm guessing now, but it looks as if we're going to be able to set water and lava for each level ourselves, and that we're in control if it rises or stays at one layer constantly. The reason why I think this is because in a later scene in the trailer, we see toxic space liquid in the funky night theme, and I can't imagine that this theme always has a three block high toxic space liquid at the ground. So I'm guessing that we're in full control over when and how water, lava and toxic space liquid appears, which would be awesome. Just imagine a funky airship super expert stage with rising waves of toxic space liquid. The next new thing are two state blocks. Hooray! That's going to be so good. Those little blocks solve so many problems when building more advanced stuff in a game. Assuming their state is saved when changing between the over and underworld or when going through a door, then they finally give us an easy way to store information globally and through loading sequences. They make making timers easier. I'm assuming that if an enemy is in front of the block when it solidifies, that the enemy dies, which allows for a lot of interesting shenanigans if we just wire an on-off switch to a global timer where a shell hits it every couple of seconds or so so, then we should have created something like those really cool challenge rooms in Celeste and much, much more. That's hands down my favorite thing they showcased. I can't wait to do evil things to Mario using those blocks. Okay, there's still a ton of stuff to discuss. Next, the custom auto-scrolling. So apparently, there is a new auto-scrolling feature that enables us to control where the camera scrolls to. That's neat. By the looks of it, we should also be able to control when the scrolling accelerates and maybe it's even possible to have the camera scroll back again. If that's possible, that could be really interesting. Imagine a small level where the camera just permanently scrolls from the left back to the right, back to the left. Could be fun. What I find more interesting here, however, is this symbol. So here is set is set to 50 coins. The symbol looks like a path to a flagpole and once this level is played there is a counter in the top that tracks how many coins Mario collected so far. So there is some form of quest system in Mario Maker 2 which sounds really really cool. We don't know how this works exactly yet but one way I could see it turn out would be that this is just an alternative way of ending a level. So for example have a level that doesn't end with a famous flagpole but ends at the moment Mario collects 50 coins. It could also be that this is an optional system that tracks if an optional objective was completed during the level, which would also be a huge improvement for setting up collectibles and optional challenges. What I really hope here though, is that we're not only able to track coins, but other stuff too, like how many enemies of a certain type are alive for example. So the 3D world theme. That one really got me by surprise. I wasn't thinking about the possibility of adding a 3D style by just making it 2D, but it's a really cool idea. Actually, it's such a great idea that now after seeing this, I really want a 2D Super Mario Odyssey theme, which is probably never going to happen. With the 3D world theme, we get tons of new additions. A lot of them appear to be exclusive to the style. There are bees, ants, cheap chomps, those blocks that make more blocks, invisible pipes, and much, much more is shown. We can compare the item wheels that are shown for the 3D world theme with the ones shown earlier to see how many of those things are going to be exclusive to the certain style. Style. And as it turns out, a lot of them are apparently. The invisible pipes, for example, seem only to exist here, which is Nyeh. Those would be really great to have in every style. Most enemies seem to be exclusive as well. What I'm really wondering is how the 3D world physics are going to work. Do we get the same platforming physics as in the original game? Do we get the full moveset including rolling? Is the long jump still in? And most importantly, is cat momentum cancelling going to be a thing? I honestly hope they go with the original physics and not with a watered down version. But we don't know right now. The trailer then goes on to show tons of small new things. There are seesaw platforms, gigantic bullet builds, climbable fans parachutes, which seem to be edible to everything, judging by the screenshot. There's Boom Boom, there's a small fire bro hidden in the top right corner during this frame, and much, much more. I don't have much to say about most of those things, but there's just one more thing I quickly want to discuss in detail. This little red dinosaur here. We're getting different Yoshi types, which is awesome all by itself. But if we pause the trailer and look really, really close, then we can see that red Yoshi appears to be no ordinary Yoshi, but is actually able to spit fire. I can't way to find out what other special Yoshis we're going to get. So that's all for the trailer, but we're still not entirely done here, because there is one promotional poster that Nintendo put out there that shows even more new stuff. So here we can see what appears to be a horizontal moving thwomp, creates a freaking Koopa in a car, no idea what's going on here, but I can't wait to find it out. Boom Boom appears to be affected by the wind effect here, we see bouncy mushroom platforms and most importantly there is Toad, Toadette and 
Thunder! Luigi. The fact that we see Toads and Luigi heavily hints that multiplayer is in the game, which is great, but also has me worried a bit, depending on how it's going to work exactly. I hope that not every level uploaded is going to be playable in co-op, but that the creator actually gets to choose for how many players the level is designed. Like that there is an option to say this stage is single player only, this level is for one to four players and another level might be exclusive to two players. The reason why I hope that not every stage can be played with up to four people is because of the super expert community. At least in my opinion, it would take something away from the game if each and every stage can be played with multiple people. Like how to design a puzzle stage so that it doesn't immediately break as soon as two people enter it. What about ultra expert stages that maybe took months to upload? It would be a bit weird if then everyone is able to grab a couple of friends and to clear it within a couple of hours. But multiplayer isn't even confirmed at this point, so they probably thought about this stuff. Alright, so what do you think overall about the Mario Maker 2 reveal? Well, to be quite honest, my hype level is over 1000. Judging by the little bit we've seen so far, they improved the game on each and every area. There are huge additions like the 3D world style, there are small quality of life improvements like big platforms, they already showcased tons of new things and there is probably much more to come. The original Mario Maker is in my opinion one of the best games ever made and all I've seen so far just looks like a straight improvement. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially like overanalyzing a 90 seconds trailer today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!